Singapore's hawkers are known as a haven for cheap food. But what happens when Singapore's most affordable food option becomes not so affordable anymore? I'm going to try to only eat meals for $2.50 or less for one week to find out if I can still find enough affordable food in our hawker centres in 2023. Why 250? We want to find out if hawker foods are still affordable even for those on the lower pay scale. So, for the purposes of this experiment, we're going to go according to MOM's latest minimum for low wage workers in the food industry, which is looking like $1,750 a month. So, let's break down the costs. According to Money Smart, we are looking at these costs for someone who's a cheapskate living on their own in Singapore in 2023. $700 for renting a room in a HDB, around $130 for public transport in Singapore, $500 a month for insurance and saving plans, phone plans for $20, recreational activities like movies, shopping, subscriptions for $100, and that leaves me with about $300 left for food. So that leaves me with about $10 a day for meals. And if I want to buy a breakfast bun for say $2, that leaves me with only $4 per meal. And imagine if I want to get a $1.50 drink every meal. That leaves me with only $2.50 a meal for food. <sighs> so today's the first day and I'm going to be buying my first $2.50 meal for lunch. Apparently, HDB and GovTech released a website portal that allows you to search based on where you're at, the most affordable food options near you. So let's see if it works. I think the nearest one is only like 2.5 km away, which is actually not that near. So, okay, let's see if I can make it. All right, so I found the stall. It says here that it's a economic bihun stall. So I guess economic means affordable. It looks like they're mostly under four dollars. It's three twenty for most of the sets, and then a two fifty set. So that's amazing. Hello. I'm trying to get a drink now for 150. Copy or copy, 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 Total, it cost me four dollars, and now I'm gonna head back, take the train, and for another twenty minutes before I go back to office. So, all right, here we go. After almost forty minutes total, I'm finally back in the office. Factoring in my travel costs, it might not be that worth it to travel further just for a cheap meal. Hi guys. Hey. If I only had one hour for lunch, that means I only have fifteen minutes to eat, which is very sad. What do you, what do you get? Uh, I got Pad Thai. How much was yours? Uh, this was seven, and then uh, with a uh, takeaway charge, it was an additional thirty cents. Wow. You cook food today? Yeah. You cook uh, like every day, right? Yeah. Because I feel like it's uh, help me cut costs. Uh. Mm. Yeah. Maybe I should start cooking like you. <laughs> But what's making food costs rise so much? At my next 250 meal stop, I try to find out. Hello! Feng Nishi, hello! Hello! Ni hao! Madam Lee is the owner of Ming Hui Nasi Lemak, a personal favourite stall that I've grown up with. Uh, 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 Okay, 
，两倍。啊，两倍的。哇，很好。OK， 我们一个现在吃。啊，好，可以，可以。耶。According to the researchers, everything from the Russia-Ukraine war to the 2022 ban on chicken exports in Malaysia all impacted food prices here. So I think I'm really blessed to have my office at our unit area where the food is known to be cheap and affordable. But what if I was working in town? Would I still be able to find some affordable food options? Let's go find out. Here in the CBD, set lunches seems to start at $15 a meal. I'm trying to look for cheap options in the CBD that is two fifty and under. I read a review online that there was this hidden cafeteria that sells two fifty meals, so let's go check it out. Hello, Uncle. 以前你们有卖那个两块半的，现在起价了。以前的事情了。很多以前，很很以前。哦，现在三块了。Looks like to go somewhere else to find uh my lunch. I'm now at Chinatown Complex. The queues are insane. Um, can I know like what you guys are queuing for? This one is the ikan bilis siang tau. Actually, quite cheap for general hawker food in Singapore. How long is the queue though? It's quite fast. I think this length should be about twenty minutes. Wow, twenty minutes for queuing for a lunch. That's that's pretty reasonable, I would say. But uh. I don't know if I have the time to spare for 20 minutes to queue for something cheap, and still it's still above my budget. So I guess I'm not gonna queue for this today. After walking around some more, I finally found a stall that has food listed under two dollars and fifty cents. So why do you come to this place to buy Tang Long? Ah, it's been long enough. It's been long enough. Is it hard to find such a cheap food now? I think it's about two dollars. Yes. So after queuing for about 15 minutes or so, I am now back with my food. Thankful that I can find something like this in the town region. But would I come all the way here to queue up for something that's two dollars but not very nutritious? I don't think it's that worth it. So definitely, time is a cost to factor in when you're considering being on a cheap food budget. The money saved is kind of lost in the time spent queuing. Personally, as someone with a really hectic schedule, that may not be a cost that I want to bear in the long term. I've been getting lazy traveling so far to look for my food, so I'm going to try out a new way of getting my meal under two fifty. So I recently read about this thing called Thai Fan Omakase, where you go to a Thai Fan stall and you ask. How much can I actually get for a certain amount? So I'm gonna try that out with just two fifty today and see what I can get. Two fifty can buy what? Two fifty can buy what? So I'm back with my food and here it is. That is actually a lot. Honestly for 250. Slave. So getting a $2.50 meal in Singapore doesn't seem impossible, but it takes some creativity and maybe some kind hawkers pitying you. I think they think that I was struggling to afford the meal, so they wanted to give it to me for free. <laughs> Super heartwarming. But some hawkers have taken it a step even further. While everyone else was increasing prices, I found one hawker who decided to slash prices instead. The two dollar fifty cent shop. Hi, honey. Hi, hello. Hi, nice to see you. Honey graduated with a double degree in law and economics, but chose to chase her true passion of helping run her parents' hawker stall last year. Okay, we have biryani for two fifty. The mutton biryani is also two fifty. Comes with the additional gravy. Okay. You know, if you pack without any charges for the containers. Oh, no charges for containers. No, no charges at all. Wow. So you buy everything. We try to absorb whatever we can. 
Before July 2022, our pricing was like $350 to $4. Wow. So it's, it's cut into more than half. I do research, I find suppliers that, that can actually accommodate. Thank God I find this kind of suppliers heart of gold. What made you actually decide to cut your price? This area, there's a lot of old folks and needy families, you know, single parents, you know. So there was one day, uh, this uncle was like, just sitting in front of my stall for like maybe 14 minutes, you know. So I approached him, uncle, what's wrong? Are you sick? You want to eat? You know? Uh, and then he said, I got no money. You know? I said, okay, never mind. I can always blunder you, give you a treat, you know. Wow. Personally, I feel the pitch. Everything is increasing, you know. The, the ingredients is increasing, the electricity, my rental just increased. And especially here, this community here, they are jobless, unemployed, you know. They are in more need than me, you know. What I can scream and save here, I will do it. Wow, oh, I feel so touched. <laughs> so in, 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 a, in a way, like with the rising cost, and do you feel like this is still sustainable in the future? Well, I hope, I hope so. It's minimal, but it's something that I can help them with, you know. It's minimal. Lah. It is the end of my third day since I started my $2.50 meal experiment. I wonder if there's any health concerns with eating cheap food that looks kind of like mostly carbs most of the time. I'm here today to meet Charlotte, a nutritionist who's passionate about nutrition literacy for everyone in Singapore. Uh, how about we each get a plate of food under 250 and see if we can find something that is actually healthy. Okay, to be honest, I cannot remember the last time that I spent less than 250 on an entire meal, okay. but uh, wish me luck. Okay, let's try, <laughs> let's see what we get. Yep. Let's go. Maybe I can get from this shop. Even bean sprouts is $3. Long Kong, how much? Okay, I think this could be a potential option. I'm trying to count. How much is Curry 180? Okay, Ika Tofu. Uh, and then Ika Tai. This is how much? Two. Because I only have two. What can I add? This is a Okay, can. Thank you. Thank you so much. So we're back here with our meals. Maybe we can just share a bit what we got. Sure. So over here I have a supposedly nasi lemak with vegetable and a singular fish ball. Look, at least you got coconut rice. Right, right. I, think that's I mean, um, and sambal, which okay. is always solid. Uh, I went to like a cooked food stall, uh, like economic rice, and I got rice, um, like a loofah with tofu, another type of tofu, and a third type of tofu. <laughs> Because I guess I thought, you know, meat will be the expensive bit, yeah. so I got plant protein, I guess. Okay. So maybe we can talk about, you know, the nutritional value of these yes. foods. So you got your carbs from okay, your rice, carbs, yeah. fiber from your vegetables, okay. um, some fats from the oil, and then some protein from the fish ball. Obviously, yeah. probably not enough, I would say. So you okay. want to make sure that at every meal you have this size amount of protein. This size amount. Obviously, it's difficult when we're talking about plant protein versus animal protein, um, but it's just a, a rough. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and you know when I go to the hawker center, my favorite places to visit uh, would usually be the economic rice stall or nasi padang mm. because in a way it's like it's like think of it as going to a salad bar and creating your own salad. You decide how much veg, how much um, you know meat, etc. You want. Is price like a concern when it comes to healthy eating? I think you can definitely eat well yeah. within both budgets. Just gotta make more careful choices. Yeah. So it's all about balance at the end of the day. So good luck for the rest of the week. Yeah, <laughs> I need it, yes. So it seems like I must definitely make healthier choices if I'm to do these experiments for more than a week. But besides my physical health, I'm also realizing that holistically, being on a strict budget of 250 is kind of affecting my social health. I've had to turn down some meals with friends because they are straight up out of my budget. Thankfully, tomorrow's a cheat day because my friend has invited me to his stall for a treat. Hi! Hello! Joel is 27 this year and he went from being culinary trained and working at Michelin starred restaurants to opening his own chain of hawker stores selling Mipok and Western food. 
I wanted to find out how younger hawkers are pricing their food in this economy. So here I have the... This is our standard bowl. Okay, and then this? This one is our premium seafood bowl. Wow, yeah. gosh, it's so good. $13.50, right, for this 13 bowl? $13.50, yes. And people still buy? Uh, people do want to try it once in a while. Yeah. yeah, it's like a treat for some of them. Like, oh, we always want to try something mm -hmm. different. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I need to try that. Wait, I need to try. I will steal some of yours. I'm on a 250 meal budget, right? Why is it that some people can charge 250 but you guys will charge maybe 450 for the cheapest option? Oh, and actually there's a lot of factors that plays a part. Uh, like for example, our chili, we do it in-house. Uh, but some people, they actually buy from the uh, suppliers, like the commercial chili. Mm. So that one definitely is a lot cheaper for them. So we have to find that balance between making it nice, yet at the same time economical for people. So yourself, you are a young hawker. What do you feel about the future of um, food costs and food prices in terms of the hawker and coffee shop? Uh, I think it will only go up, but hopefully people will be able to accept that you know, when we increase the price, right, it's really not because we want to profit more, but it's really to survive. Um, there are so many layers to go through. So suppliers, they will have already their first layer of markup ready. Yeah. Uh, rental, the, the coffee shop owners will have their first layer of markup as well. Then our takeaway containers, electricity, gas, yeah. manpower, before the profit really comes in. But while I think that the price will continue to increase in the hawker scene, I do feel that they will reach a a balance, yeah, that maybe people in terms of their income will increase as well. And then they find that, hey, this is actually a Still okay, a yeah. While Joelle may be right about the average Singaporean wages, what about others whose household incomes are not going to increase? To tackle this, I found a coffee shop that recently started offering $2.50 meal options across the board. So I recently found out online that there's a coffee shop where every stall has a 250 budget meal option. So let's go see how is this possible. Okay, because these two pounds of food, the main thing is that in this area, many people live alone. Okay, and they are not big. The budget meal is for the elderly. That means they don't need to pay higher prices and they eat less food. So it's about this two pounds of food. It's a little bit smaller. Yes, it's a little smaller. It's for the elderly. It's for the elderly. I learned that this was a coffee shop wide initiative to cut costs for the community. Hello boss, can I get the fried chicken cutlet rice? Thank you. Wow, look at that. I'm surprised, it looks actually quite generous in the helping. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of rice. So it's nice to know that there are initiatives like this kind of being taken on by coffee shops trying to help elevate the rising cost for people who are more vulnerable like the elderly. Mm. Wow, really good. It has been six days into my cheap food experiment. Verdict, it is possible to survive on $2.50 per meal budget in Singapore. But boy, is it hard. But is it possible to do this long term? On my last day, I'm going to get advice from a friend who's actually been on a similar budget as me but for way longer. So, welcome Lisa. Thanks for being here. Lisa has a YouTube channel sharing her financial journey as a young working adult on graduate pay and shares tips on how to best budget our money. And for almost two years straight, she's been living on a grocery and food budget of under $250 a month. That's only about $8 a day. So how do you actually do it for the past two years? Well, with $250 a month, uh, that is for my meals outside of my house. So anything that I buy from outside, then the meals that I buy mm. in, from the office. Okay. And I don't really think about it as uh, how much I have to spend a meal okay. or a day. Because if you skip some days, if I'm working from home, mm. then I'm eat, eating at home, then it adds up so I'll have more for the rest of the month. Yeah, so in a way, 250 is really just my overall budget for the entire month. Previously, back when my budget was a bit tighter, I would ask my mother to pack last night's dinner for mm. lunch if I'm going to work. We get a lot of leftovers from my family, mm. uh, and then we just keep it in the fridge, and I'll have it for various meals throughout the week. 
So that 250 is actually really doable for the occasional times that I'm going to the office or when I'm going out for dinner with friends. Okay, so, so in that sense, you would say that 250, if it's just solely um, on all the meals, it's not feasible? I think it's feasible, it's, it's but feasible. you have to make a lot of sacrifices. Mm -hmm. um, like you have to cook at home most of the time and also it would limit what groceries you can buy, I right. think. And if you want to feed yourself well for a month on 250, yeah. I think for me, I basically cannot go out and meet my friends. Right. Or I will, I don't know, invite them to come over to my <laughs> yeah. house. Cook for them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but it would be tough. For myself, when I was restricting my budget on food, I was in a season of my life where I was okay with doing that. But as with all budgets, I feel depending on your life circumstances, it will change. So for me, I think I want to be in a place with my food spending where I'm prioritizing health and nutrition. Right, right, yeah. um, and if I'm going to be eating out more, I need to figure out a balance, like how often do I bring food from home. So yeah, seasons of your life, depending on where you are in your life and what you can pay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So I'm here for my very last meal of the experiment. And I decided to go to the cheapest item on my list that I could find and that is $1.20 porridge. So, I'm excited! This is the first time I can actually binge on this budget. In the end, you have to put things into perspective. Even if a meal like this costs a regular hawker price, which is about four fifty, I would still only be able to buy maybe a cup of bubble tea somewhere else. And if I were to go to a restaurant, a single meal would cost upwards of 12 to $15. So while more can be done to make sure that hawker food stays affordable for the masses, I would say that this is still relatively reasonably priced, at least for now.